So on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being trying to operate more or less business as usual, in other words, behaving irresponsibly, and 10 being fully clamped down, only leaving the house in a hazmat suit when absolutely necessary, I'd say we're a solid 7. I mean, we had a small radius to begin with, given this is a car-free household, but we've kind of self-limited to home, grocery store, here, and that's it. There have been two exceptions, where I met colleagues at an outdoor bar, uh, and then sweated it out for two weeks, wondering if my number was up, because I promise you, if I get the COVID, I'll definitely be the one on a ventilator and dead within 48 hours. But I haven't been to a restaurant in over six months, and to be honest, I don't miss them all that much. But this past Friday, um, neither of us felt like cooking and decided to order from McDonald's. And because it had been so long, it was, it was kind of an exciting event. <laughs> I know it's pathetic, but here we are. Also, because it had been so long, we went totally berserk with the order. I mean, it was Big Mac meals with the big-ass chingon fries, plus double cheeseburgers, and, well, when it arrived, oh boy. Handfuls of fries drenched in the Heinz, slurks of special sauce down the front of the t-shirt. Completely shameful, orgiastic behavior. It had to have been at least two days worth of calories in less than 10 minutes. And for a very brief moment afterwards, I entered a zone that can only be described as complete satisfaction. I did not have a single unmet need, <laughs> and then I passed out on the sofa. Now, this is not the first time I've embarked upon a good old-fashioned McDonald's binge, um, but I've never experienced an aftermath quite like this. At some point, I must have crawled to bed because I woke up at 2 a.m. basically in the upside down. Hey, hey guys, do you see the... and remained there for the next 12 hours. Ruined! Worse by an order of magnitude than any hangover I've ever had. What's my point? No point per se. I'm just telling a story. Ooh, someone's all business today. Chop, chop. I'm gonna play some more excerpts from Ludus Tonalis. So bring it on, Hindemith haters. Cast not pearls before swine, I always say. This is the piece I told you I first played with an orchestra, and you know I've looked everywhere for the score, but I just can't find it. But I remember these two pieces being gorgeously orchestrated for winds. Lots of flutes, which I think you'll hear why. And then my favorite instrument of all, bass clarinet. Oh my god. So rich and expressive, the hollandaise sauce of instruments. It enrobes you, you know. A couple of Hindemithy things to listen for. In the interlude, he does one of my favorite things, which is, you know, make a few disorienting statements in the melody and then bring you home to Jesus with a nice churchy cadence. As if to say, That is how it is. But then at the end, it's almost like he loses his train of thought and the music just kind of meanders along and, and drifts off into nothing. And, and this ends up being one of the greatest setups for a few that I know of in all the repertoire.
Thank you.